Welcome to Beyond the Pod, presented by SodaStick.com. Brunette, he moves, Brunette back in, he scores! Minnesota has upset the Colorado Avalanche! Andrew Brunette, the game-winning goal! Here are your hosts, the second greatest scorer in Gopher hockey history, Pat Micheletti. And the second greatest hockey analyst on this podcast, Brandon Molesky. Hey, welcome to another episode of Beyond the Pod. Brandon Molesky along with Pat Micheletti as always brought to you by SodaStick.com. Pat, you got the new uh, SodaStick yeah, you like uh, that. Fighting I Saints hat. I, I, it came in the mail yesterday. You know, I'm seeing you with all of this and I'm like, wait a second. Yeah. I need to get one. And so I made the call and there it is, Brandon. How's it looking? That's a good looking hat. That's a good, very yeah. good looking hat. Yeah, I got, I got mine here as well. Uh, if you want to uh, get that hat for yourself, just go to sodasick.com. Use the code KFN for 15% off. That's a good looking hat. As I've always said, some of the best looking jerseys in all of college hockey is Minnesota State Mankato. And the head coach of the Mavericks, Mike Hastings, joins us now. Mike, as always, thank you so much for your time. You uh, Already early in the season, big series against the uh, Minnesota Gophers this weekend, two top five teams. Uh, I know you had the exhibition game last weekend, but you've, you've been coaching for a long time. At this stage of your career, do you still get nerves, butterflies for opening weekend, or has that subsided a long time ago? No, uh, absolutely, uh, especially when you look at the roster and you see who you're playing against. Uh, uh, but at the end of the day, I think those competitive juices, you know, that's what we're always – pinging to get back to uh, after the game ends for you as a player. I uh, mean, it's really no different with this. We're, we're new every year. It is new. Uh, yeah. Your team's different. Your makeup's different. Uh, you know, you, you've got to continue to evolve and learn a little bit more about what's going to make this group tick. And it's, it's really no, no different this year. We went out and, you know, played the exhibition game and we're taught a few things. So we're hopefully going to evolve here this week and, and put together a good weekend. Is that one of the things um, you look to uh, at the start of every year of like, how are the guys coming in attitude wise, or, you know, do you is seeing a difference in maybe one player, two players, you know, how does that, you know, that, that first day or, you know, when you start with, with your team, well, I, th- I think there's really two things there, Mick. You, you look for, is there the work ethic? Are, are the guys getting along? Are they being inclusive for the new guys that are coming in? Are they taking them under their wings and, and mm-hmm. doing what they need to do just to show them because they've been there before? And then, you know, the second piece is is can you get to an identity? Whatever, whatever that team's identity is going to be, uh, can you get there sooner than later? And I, w- I will tell you, I, I remember sitting this weekend or maybe the weekend before a year ago in my hotel room out at UMass and uh, questioning my intelligence on why would we be starting at UMass when they're unveiling their national championship banner in front of 9,000 people and, right. and, and putting our team in that situation. And uh, there was, uh, I don't know if it's anxiety, but maybe as you said, butterflies, you're sitting there the night before and wondering if you're doing the best thing for your club. And so for that, we, we've, we're in the same spot now. I, I think we've seen a, a good group get together up until this point and the intangibles that we talked about, I like where those are at, but as both, you know, you don't know until the lights come on and you drop the puck. Uh, for real. So we'll learn a lot about ourselves on Friday and Saturday this weekend. All right. Before we get more into your team and into the series, I got to talk about you a little bit. Uh, You are the hottest coach in college hockey. There there's no question. All the jobs that were available this summer, at least when people call me is, is is he going to take that? Is he going to take this job? Is he going to take that job? He's at the top of the list for, for this job. What was it like for you this summer, you know, having to, or or even from the end of the season, having to deal with all of that, and and uh, and and where are you at, and where were you uh, were you thinking at all about a potential move? Well, hey, you know what, Mick, a, a quick little story about that. We're doing the exit interviews for our guys, and and this is a new day and age talking about social media 
Yeah. And um, I'm going through a couple of exit interviews with our guys and, and my phone starts buzzing a little bit and uh, get done with one of the interviews. I flip it over and it's my wife. And, and all she texts was, she goes, you okay? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like okay. Uh, I, I step outside and I said, what's going on? And she goes, well, I, I would think that you'd discuss this with me, but I see you're a front runner for BU and Michigan State. <laughs> um, and, 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 and and that, that, that happened. Um, and yeah. then subsequently, you know, as we're going through the exit interviews with the guys on what they're planning on doing, either staying, going, and a couple guys asked me that. And so in today's world, those things happen whether we want them to happen or not, um, whether it's positive or negative, or you stay in, or they're going to get rid of you, uh, different things that way. And and so had some conversations with my wife, our family. Um, at, at the end of the day, Mick, I, I'm blessed to be where I'm at. Uh, yep. you, guys, you guys understand it better than most. Pretty special state to be coaching college hockey in. Uh, yep. and the university has been unbelievable to me. Uh, I don't think you ever... Uh, get so closed-minded that you won't listen to other people right. um, and, and involve conversations with the people that you're working with at this time, but uh, who I'm surrounded by, uh, the support of the university, the community, um, this is a pretty special place. And, and I think it takes something really off the wall for me to, to, to look elsewhere because I feel very blessed at where I'm at and I like what I'm doing right now. All right, you mentioned earlier, you're talking about your uh, exhibition loss to Omaha last week, 7-2 loss. You said that uh, you guys were taught some things. Um, what what did you learn from that? I know uh, giving up seven goals is not something that uh, we're accustomed to seeing over the last couple of years in Mankato hockey. So uh, what, what did you learn from that game? <laughs> well, a couple of things. First, though, I'll say it's not a good idea to have any of your guys in tennis shoes with sticks and pucks uh, before a game starts. So you start shorthanded. So that, that 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 that's the first thing that went wrong that day. Uh, and you know what? I, I, I learned that this game, as you guys again know, it, it can humble you in a hurry if you don't bring your lunch pail and if you're not willing to compete in different areas that what we call great real estate in front of your net, in front of their net. Second thing is, is we went to the penalty box way too often. We took a five-minute major that I thought turned the game completely. And if if we stay with that, that's a recipe against the group that we're going to be playing this weekend uh, that, that's going to have us on the short end. Um, and then, you know what, for any team uh, at any time during the year, your horses need to run. Your best players need to be your best players. And, you know, I, I'd be the first one to say, and, and I think our group does a really good job at, at self-accountability. Uh, we, we didn't play as well as we should as a cohesive unit. So I think we learned quite a bit. Um, and now we're going to see how much we've been able to move the needle during the week so that we're a little bit better prepared for a team like Minnesota. Uh, well, we, we might as well talk about your goaltending. Uh, you, you've got you've got two new one. Well, you've got a guy coming back, but uh, a, a new one in. Um, is that a situation where, you know, you'll play both of them, see which one comes out on top later on in the year, or what's the plan for the goaltending? Right now, Mick, I'm, I'm kind of going day to day. Um, yeah. Just because it's the only way I can transfer in my mind, you know, some confidence, let them build their own body of work here throughout a week. Uh, all three guys got a period last weekend. Great. Yep. So now we've got a little book on that. Uh, we've got a week after a game like that. And I think you're going to see an opportunity for not just one, but potentially all three here mm -hmm. in the first uh, month of the season, uh, depending how it goes. Even if somebody goes out and plays really well on a given night, uh, I think you've still got to provide opportunity. That's what players look for. They want an yep. opportunity to show themselves. And if you don't give that to them and they've done everything that they could do as far as work ethic, attitude, being a team guy, I think you've got to give them those opportunities. So that's what we'll be doing here early in the season. You got Minnesota this weekend. Uh, they, they played last weekend and swept at Lindenwood and you got, you know, two top five teams out. Obviously you got, history with them uh, over the last couple of years in the NCAA tournament. Uh, what, what are you expecting out of the Gophers this weekend? Boy, uh, loaded question. I, I, they're about as talented as a group uh, that I've seen put together for a while. Last year, we, we lose to a very talented, uh, gritty Denver team uh, in the national championship game. And, 
you know, I, I've been blessed to have an opportunity to be behind the bench when Matt Nyes was going over the bench for us and, and Faber was going over the bench for us uh, at the Olympics. So I've I've got an idea about those two guys and what motivates them and them showing the idea of coming back to Minnesota and trying to lead them to a national championship. I've got a ton of respect uh, yeah. for those two guys. And then, and then you look at what else they bring. Uh, you know, they're young, but they're not inexperienced when you when you have young guys that have played at the national program and have played in international competition uh, they're not your normal 18 19 year old players and if you look at the projections the the, the draft picks that they have uh, and now let's talk about that decor um, Bobby's got to have a headache deciding what six or seven are going to play. Yeah. Um, you know, and if he wants to shuffle a couple down south, uh, <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, they're that talented. I've known Jackson Lacombe all the time uh, from him at Shattuck. And, and you go through the group that they have right now. Uh, they can be in a lot of different ways. So uh, one, we better stay out of the box. We better start on time and um, dictate what we get to dictate, not create their offense because uh, they're going to be good enough to do it on their own. When you look at you know, this series and, and, and when it's being played, right, it, it's, it's the first week in October. Um, it's your first weekend, their second weekend. You know, obviously the fans are, you know, hyping this thing to be, you know, a great. But, but should we temper things a little bit? Because, hey, in, in, in all reality, your team is, is going to be different in two months, Minnesota is definitely um, going to be a different team in in two to three months. So, how much of a relevance should we really put on this weekend? Uh, I think it's a great point, Mick. And, and to to lend some facts to it, uh, last year we go to UMass, we sweep them, yeah, in, in their building, so they get two losses at home. And who's Minnesota end up having to come from behind to beat last year in the NCAA tournament? You know, yeah. so so the, to me, it's a start, and yeah. it's a, it's a journey. You, you you start to write pages in your book of business on what you're going to be at the end of the year, and uh, I think the ones that do it best are the ones that learn from wins, the ones that mm. learn from successes, and learn from their failures. You know, learn from the time that you didn't you didn't end up on the right side of the scoreboard, and 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 then how you handle both. So, yeah, I think you have to temper it a little bit. Uh, I know if Bobby and I were sitting here split screen, we'd both love to be two and zero coming out of this uh, because it, it stacks some chips on your side that gives you a little bit of flexibility down the road. Uh, and so, you know. For us, it's a very big weekend. Just it's Minnesota, and and when we play Minnesota, yeah. when Minnesota plays Duluth, we got Duluth the following weekend, and yeah. we got St. Cloud the following weekend. Yeah. So, so it's not going to get any easier. We've just got to get to you know continue to learn about our team and and continue to grow. Yeah, gonna... well, you know that that was one of the conversations we had uh, with our good friend up in Bemidji uh, about you know you guys. You know, I mean, look at your schedule. I mean, Minnesota, then Duluth, then St. Cloud. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine if we had that every weekend, all year long? I could. Um, make. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll move I on. Could. Go, yeah. go ahead, Brandon. Before I get off on my tangent. Well, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna attempt to ask Mike to brag about himself, which I know is impossible with coaches in hockey, but uh, I, I saw a stat that over the last five years, uh, your team has the best power play percentage in the country over a five-year span. And clearly, you got to have good offensive players in town. So I, I understand you're going to give credit to the players here. But at the same time, uh, what, what is it about you and your staff that has been able to figure out things on the power play to have to be that successful over a five-year stretch? Well, I'm, I'm going to do what you told me not to do. On the first, <laughs> on the first part, like the, the, and we talk about this in our locker room, uh, players win hockey games, systems don't. Yeah. Systems are a blueprint of where guys might be, but if you don't have somebody that can make the right play at the right time, the right way, uh, good really, good, really good, good plans go out the window. Um, and so I've been fortunate to coach some really good players. And then I would say, you know, probably not being one dimensional. Uh, there's so many good coaches in college hockey, even within our state, I'll start. Um, yeah. If, if, 
if you give them one or two looks, they're taking them away. They're, they're going to find a way to make sure that that doesn't happen uh, against their club. And so for us, I think having some versatility um, also, you know, you saw Minnesota, they played three power plays this weekend. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and so not being a one trick pony, as far as just having one group and then maybe having some versatility on different looks and, and just continuing to work on it. We, we spend a lot of time on it as I think a lot of teams doing this in this game. Uh, it's a little different at the National League level because they don't have the opportunity to practice as much as we do. And so we try to utilize that opportunity to try and, you know, and, and mix different guys in until you can find something that clicks. Just for the just for the record, you are recruiting these players and you are de- identifying these players. So you're still then giving yourself credit for how well, how well the players are doing on the power play. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I, I got to say there too, Todd Kadat's pretty good at what he does. And you, yeah, guys, yeah. You, you, you guys know that. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Mike, um, I, you know, I don't know how you go about this or identifying, but and, and I, I don't want to leave any of your great players uh, from a year ago out. Uh, but, you know, um, Nathan Smith, phenomenal year, phenomenal player, Olympian now with the Coyotes. Um, you know, he was your stud uh, amongst many. But I get my, my, my question is, going into a, n- a new year, right, you look for guys to emerge and, and, and not necessarily be Nathan Smith, but be a guy that, you know, has a little bit more responsibility now. Um, does that kind of play itself out? Do you do you have an idea going in? Okay, I'm looking for a little bit more out of player X, you know, in the in the upcoming season. And is that guy um, able to to handle that? I I think twofold, Nick. One, we're not going to replace him with one. I, yep. I, I think we've got to share the responsibility there and. And again, I try and let my eyes do a lot of the work as far as looking at people that at the most important time a year ago, even in the Minnesota game, in in the Harvard game, uh, you know, Smitty scores a goal against Notre Dame for us to win a a real close game. But we had other guys step up at really important times that are back, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, and, and you can look at a guy like Andres Pavel. Uh, he w- I thought he had an outstanding, unbelievable last six weeks to his season. Uh, we're going to need him to step up and take yep. some of the responsibility that Smitty took with him. And then you look at a guy like David Sillier, who played, I think, some of his best hockey at the most important time of the year. Can those be two guys that can step up into that along with the usual suspects? You look at yep. Brendan Furry, a preseason CCJ yep. player of the year. Ryan Sandlin, we haven't talked about, yeah. who, who led our team in goals with 21. Yeah. Um, and then two guys on the left side with, with Sam Morton and, and Lucas Sauter. We need that group to take the responsibility that Smitty and, and a guy like Reggie Lutz, uh, yeah. Julian Napravnik, those guys took off. Those guys are going to have to pick up the reins and run with it. All right, as you mentioned, you got Gophers, then Duluth, then St. Cloud State. So a little bit of a, a wait before you play your uh, CCHA competition. Uh, you just mentioned uh, some of the preseason uh, favorites for uh, winning player of the year in the CCHA. Your team is favored to win the conference once again. Who is who is your biggest threat in the CCHA this year? Well, I think you saw a real good uh, a real good example of of what we're going to be taking um, week in and week out. When you saw Northern Michigan and Bowling Green play uh, yeah. last weekend, they split on the weekend. Bowling Green. Uh, Ty Eidner, a guy from the city, a guy that I, I respect tremendously uh, because we've had to compete against him. Grant Patoni, I had an opportunity to coach uh, way back for, for Team USA when he helped us win a gold medal up in Canada. Uh, two guys that prepare their teams very well. Um, I, those are two that come to mind. Our good friend up north, uh, I would never count out Tommy Seratori because of what that program does and what a pain they are to play year in and year out. Um, because they're not an easy out. Um, you know, Michigan Tech has really put themselves, I think, on the map here in the last uh, five, six, seven years. And so, you know, for us, I got to tell you the truth, fellas, uh, I'm looking the next 72 hours. Uh, I know I know when we get I know when we get back to our league play, uh, those guys are going to make us better also. And uh, I just uh, I'm hoping these six games will prepare us well when we get into conference play. 
Uh, Mike, as always, we appreciate your time. Good luck this weekend, and uh, yep. good luck the rest of the way. We'll talk to you down the line. Thanks a lot, fellas. Really yep. good to see you both here. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. Yes. You bet. See you Friday. All right. Mike Hastings, head coach of Minnesota State, Mankato. The Mavericks take on the Gophers home and home series uh, this weekend. They're at Minnesota on Friday night and then down in Mankato on Saturday night. Pat, before I chat with you, let's talk about uh, the logo that's on your hat right now, sodastick.com. Uh, they are a sponsor. They're original Minnesota sports-inspired goods. If you haven't seen it yet, you got to check it out. All their apparel screen printed here in Minnesota on super soft, super comfy shirts. You'll love it. We're going to hook you up with 15% off your next order. So use the code KFAN for 15% off. That is sodastick.com, original Minnesota sports-inspired goods. Use the code KFAN for 15% off. And uh, Patrick, uh, let's talk a little bit of Minnesota Wild here as we're kind of yeah. – Closing off the preseason a week away uh, from regular season action against the New York, New York Rangers. Uh, has anything stuck out to you so far in this training camp or preseason for the Wild? Well, I, you know, a, a little bit. I, I don't know much about, how do you pronounce it, Patan. Yep. Uh, I, I don't know a lot about him. Uh, I, I, kind of a surprise to me. Um, he looks like he's going to make the team. Um, one that there were two guys that I thought had a real good chance to make the team to start the season due to injuries. And one was Mason Shaw and the other was Mitchell Chafee. They ended up sending Chafee down Mason Shaw still hanging around. And he's one of those guys where you're like, man, how can we send him down? You know, he's not going to be in your top six. He, but, but you know, he's responsible. He's worked hard. He's persevered. And, um, you know, he, he, he's a guy that I think, um, you know, could eventually you could see a lot of at some point on your on your on your third, fourth line uh, throughout the year. We'll see. At the time of this taping, the uh, the Wild have played five preseason games. They will play uh, Chicago tonight. Um, here are my observations. I've seen two of the games. You know, yep. two, of them, two of them weren't even on television, I don't believe. Right. Uh, I've, so I've seen two or three. Uh, one observation, and Pat, I always preface this by saying it's preseason. They're not playing at the same speed. They're not playing at the same intensity. So it can be, you know, they're not playing with necessarily the guys that they're going to be in, in the regular season or playing against. Yep. But uh, there are some little things I feel like you can see. The one thing I noticed, Pat, Matt Boldy looks really, really, really good. <laughs> you know, the, the the knock on Matt Boldy has always been his foot speed. Can he be a good enough skater at the National Hockey League level? Uh, and I thought his skating was good enough last year, Pat. I think his skating is good now. I, I don't even think it's a, a, a question or a flaw in his game. He was flying the other night when I saw him. Um, uh, he can move. He can skate. He looks even thicker. You know, you, you, we got to remember he's still only 21 years old. He's kind of growing into that man body. I thought he looked bigger, stronger, thicker, and he can skate. And given he's already got hands with that size, with that IQ, and then you throw in the skating with it. I, I, you know, I'm not as worried now about um, how he's going to produce without Kevin Fiala. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I uh, couldn't agree more. I, I think, uh, I think he's going to take his game even to another level. Um, one thing I'm, I, you know, it'll be interesting to see. Um, you know, initially, I'm sure they're going to start out Hartman, Zuccarello, and Kaprizov. Boldy and Hartman have played together a little bit in camp. Um, I. I, they, I, they played with each other in the uh, World Championships last year, too. Yes, they did. Yes, where they were mm -hmm. really, really good together. And if Marco Rossi, and I think um, at tonight they play, as you mentioned, I think Marco Rossi is going to get uh, time between uh, Zuccarello and and um, uh, Kaprizov. <laughs> How can I forget How do you him? forget that name? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's an afterthought, you know, just yeah, yeah. 40 odd goal score. But I think they, you know, without saying it, I think they hope that he can emerge and show enough that he can play with those two guys. And, and, and if they do that, I think that makes Minnesota a, a much, much better team because Hartman's got some, he's got some years behind him now, you know, he's a known player. And for some, for some reason or other, you know, if, if if Rossi's between Boldy, we'll say yeah. Well, here's a rookie. You know, um, it it just it gives a, a different this team a different dynamic. You know, like 
you kind of forget Fiala because now you've got Hartman Boldy together and then you've got Zuccarello Kaprizov and then, you know, Rossi. So I, I think they're hoping that, yeah, you know what, maybe we should take a look at this uh, because you know, the Eck line is going to be the Eck line. And, and then all of a sudden I personally, I would feel a lot better about this team um, knowing that. And, but you know, we'll, we'll have to see how it shakes out it's a long well, year. Well, if you have any inside information on Rossi playing with Zuccarello and Kaprizov, let me know. Cause I'm going to go bet the Calder on him right now. I'm going to go bet him to win the Calder trophy. Oh. If, that was, if that was the case, you know, that being said, Pat, they've eased him in here in training camp. You know, the, the thought was him and both Sam Steele would kind of compete for playing yeah. on Boldy's line. And they started Rossi off with Dewar and Duham and they've kept him there. And, and maybe that's just, Hey, we like those three together. We like the way they've looked. And they had, you know, they had a couple goals the other night in Chicago. Um, so maybe uh, that's part of it, but uh, you know, they're kind of easing them in. Uh, it, it, it almost appears off right out of the gate. It's fourth line role, but also getting some power play time. Yeah. And, and listen, he's a great power play guy. Um, you know, and, and, and that's why Addison is up, you know, if Addison, you know, Addison is going to play, um, be a big part of this team if he can run the power play. And we know that they have to improve their power play. And, and, you know, he's been, he's had a really good camp and has been really good on the power play. And, and so, um, you know, those, both of those guys, but I, you know, as I mentioned, I believe tonight Rossi is going to get that chance with Zuccarello and, and, and Kaprizov. And, you know, it's, it, again, it's an exhibition game and uh, Hartman's getting the night off. And so don't look any further than that. But, but um, so, you know, I, you know, I think, I think they're going to try to find their way again, because again, it's a new year. Um, It's a, you you start at, at, you know, you're at zero games right now and uh, you got to get through the grind. You know, Pat, let's say this Rossi Dewar Duham line to start off with is kind yep. of a, th- a thing for a while. It's kind of a, an interesting dynamic in your four lines in that, you know, that's not a traditional fourth line. I know Duham's got some size and can play and can play a physical <laughs> brand, but you know, Dewar's uh, you know, a little spark plug and he's not the biggest guy and he's gonna skate hard and he's gonna work. And obviously Rossi is a more of a skill player. That's not a traditional fourth line, and I don't mind that. It, it for for a team that is looking to replace um, the scoring void left by Kevin Fiala to be able to have four lines that could score, I think would be a plus. You know, we've gone Brandon where, um, you look at a team and the top six have to score or else you don't win your third and fourth liners are blah. That was years back. And we've gotten more and more, Oh, your top nine. Okay. And then, and then you have your fourth line. Maybe this is a new trend of, of, of having, you know what? We've got a fourth line that we expect to score, not hope, expect, and and maybe that's kind of their thought process on it. Uh, you know, maybe it's a new way of you know what? We got to even out the minutes a little bit more, because in reality, when you look at teams, um, and you look at you know you and I, er, uh, you know, doing fan line, uh, the nights that we do them, we you know you you print out those uh, those game sheets, and and we both look at minutes minutes played and you know you can see your top guys getting uh, more minutes why well you know power play penalty kill um but uh it'll be interesting to see how that all evens out and if it evens out and they give more time to that to that fourth line than in years past uh kaylin addison's gonna get uh you know a, a, a shot on the team he's gonna already starting off on your first power play unit and once again, you know, just a small little sample size of preseason action. But Pat, he can one time the puck, and yeah. that has been missing from this team, basically in the existence of the franchise. And uh, even just having the threat of a one timer, I think, improves your power play. You know, the key for him is going to be you've got Kaprizov over here, and you got Boldy over here, and you got Zuccarello. And I don't want him to get to the point where he's deferring. You know, a lot of times oh. with the young defensemen. Uh, you know, thinking I got to feed Caprice up. I got to, I got to get the puck in his hands. And to a certain extent, yes, you got to get the puck to your best playmaker, but I want him to shoot the puck from back there and he needs to be a threat to shoot. You, you don't know, Brandon, how, how, how big of a difference it will make, how better those two guys that you mentioned, Zuccarello, Caprice up will be because it's going to open things up. And all of a sudden, if teams know this guy's not afraid to shoot the puck, they're going to defend differently. 
right? And if they're defending differently, that means they're not all on Kaprizov and, you know, know that he's going to get the puck. You know, you, you, you have to, on the power play, um, get those defenders um, not, you know, thinking differently, like, and, and wondering what are they going to do instead of them knowing. Last year in the playoffs, St. Louis, they they defended Minnesota. They knew Minnesota's power play so well. And, you know, that, in fact, one of their one of their brass had told me that, hey, watch their penalty kill this in this series because they have got Minnesota down. And when a team has you down, you know, and understanding what you're going to do, um, they're going to have success. St. Louis had success against Minnesota in the playoffs, which was a which was a big part of it. Uh, we have a couple of injuries. Jordan Greenway, John Merrill, not going to start the season. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, um, I was just thinking about Greenway specifically. Here's a guy that has had conditioning issues in the past. And, um, you know, it seems like he's improved it a little bit over the last year or two that maybe Bill Guerin's gotten his ear. But um, not only is he not going to start the season, but let's face it, he's probably been out of commission a little bit most of the summer. He's had multiple in, m- multiple things going on. Yes. Even, even when he even when he returns, are we concerned at all about uh, you know his conditioning level and his ability to play once he does come back? Um, I I'm not because I you know my expectation level for him has changed. Um, I I you know I, I I look at that line and and they fit together and they're a good line. It, yeah. yeah, is it going to take him time? But I don't expect him. Oh no, if he has if he doesn't score in the in the first 10 games back i'm i'm not going to get worried about it because guess what i don't expect him to, to be a 25 goal scorer you know i i expect that line serves a purpose um they can create offense they can change the momentum of a game they can pin a team down in their end for long stretches of time and when they're doing that when they're on their game like that you know they're to me they're the engine they, they really are. And um, and when they're going, because, you know, you look back in the playoffs, they weren't great in the playoffs last year uh, by any stretch of the imagination. And what was one of Minnesota's um, biggest downfalls in the playoffs last year besides their, their special teams? It was their ability to forecheck and, and, and keep teams, you know, keep St. Louis pinned in their own end and frustrate them. At times they did it, but when they are on their game, that's what they are doing. And so, um, yeah, will it take him a little bit of time? For sure. But uh, uh, ultimately, uh, when he is healthy, when they are all playing together, um, you know, I, I, I think that it'll be fine. All right, Pat, every show we end with stick taps. Who are you going to give your stick tap today to? Oh, I'm going to let you go first, okay? Okay. Uh, this is uh, like two weeks old, but uh, I'm going to give my stick tap to Jess Scott, who was promoted as the assistant coach of the Gophers women's hockey team. Uh, Jess was the girls' high school coach at Coon Rapids when I was the boys' coach there, and we, we both went in yes. at the same time. And uh, phenomenal person, hard worker, uh, great uh, relating to the kids, and to go from where she was, and I've, I've seen her put in the work with internet you know minnesota teams and international teams and pretty awesome for her to get to where she is where she's now an assistant coach for uh one of the best teams in uh, women's college hockey so my stick tap goes to jess scott okay mine um is gonna go to shelly and bob motzko um they uh, have created a foundation where they are going to be giving uh a- a- every home game a thousand dollar scholarship to a student uh in in honor of um their son mac who um sadly passed away a year ago uh i and i i just think uh, i think that's wonderful um of you know giving back and 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 creating uh this foundation this scholarship uh in his name i think it's wonderful that is very wonderful and i appreciate you having me go first i would not have been able to follow that (laughs) Uh, thank you, Pat. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week. Sounds great, Brandon. Take care. All right. He's Pat Micheletti. I'm Brandon Molesky. This has been another episode of Beyond the Pod. As always, it's brought to you by SodaStick.com. You can watch us on the KFN YouTube channel 
or listen to us on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. We'll talk to you next week right here on Beyond the Pod. Bye. 